How about that? Boom. Haven't done that in a while, but how about let's make an intro on the GoPro. So basically, nice little two pounder. Me and Hunter out here on a little sneak hole place today. And so far we've seen a four and a half that I almost made by a three pounder cruising. I skipped under a bush and lost a three pounder. Check this out. Just caught a two pounder. We've been here like 20 minutes and unseen. Lost a three and a quarter, three and a half. Caught a two, saw a three, and saw a four and a half. So I apologize. But look, forgot the chest cam at home, I guess. I forgot it somewhere along the way, anyways. As always, though, appreciate you guys watching. Thank you. 70% of y'all are not subscribed. So please go down right now, hit the subscribe button. Let's have a fun day. How about that one, dude? Four pounder on daggum sight fishing. <laughs> you see the other one with it? There's another four pounder. The other one looked a little bigger, though, for real. Wait, I think he was higher up. Hmm. Dang, man. How about that? Hunter might have got him. Hunter might have got him. She, she did. He's not as big, but Hunter Dang sure got him. Swing him on in here, girl. I'm gonna keep this just to, uh, that, there must have been more than two, because there was another four pounder. I saw that rod take <laughs> off. Mm. That was fun. How about that? <laughs> take a picture. You can't make that stuff up. Four pounder, two and a quarter. Doubling up. Mm. Look, I'm really sorry I don't have a chest cam because on that fish right there, we actually saw it swimming down and I threw over there with a frog and watched him come up and eat it. There was another one with it that was a four pounder and obviously there must have been a few fish there because Hunter threw over there and catches a two and a quarter and there was another one. How big do you think the other one was, Hunter? I think it was bigger. Bigger than the one I caught? It was, a, it was another good one with it. So we've, we've done seen three four pounders today one was a five and then that one i just caught was probably a little over four and then uh i lost a three and a quarter we've been here like 40 minutes Not bad, but I wanted I wanted one of the big ones. There was there was like a five pounder, and there was a three and a half, and there were some of these. There was also two. So Hunter told me to get to the back and she will maneuver the front and I had to get to the back. We spent around in circles for about two and a half minutes. She finally washed us up close to a tree, pitched in there first time and busted a four pounder. Her personal best is a four two. I think it's four five. Hunter said it's four two. So this fish possibly breaks her personal best. We're gonna weigh it in just a little while. What are we rooting for here? 
Four-seven. Four-seven be good. Four eight. There you go. Show them to the camera. Ooh. What is that? Best bass to date. Stole the front. Robbed me of my fish. Worth it. Shaller. You gonna take that one in the keeper like you did the other day? I mean, shaller. Ah, he's freaking hooked at the bottom of the wheel. Probably gonna come off. Nope. Good and watch him come up. He's got a weird thing poking out right there. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's kind of strange. It's where his gill, he's missing a gill plate, and right here it's hanging down. He grew back without it though. Little fat joker, man. All right, Hunter, give us an update on how today has went. I've caught the biggest fish. What else? And I've caught four fish. And? And that's all. What are they biting though? For me, what are they biting? Another good one, long one. Okay, so that was actually yesterday that me and Hunter was out fishing, the video you just watched. Basically, I have not got technical with y'all about what I use for a frog in a while. As you can see now, I'm throwing the tropical white colored popping spro frog. Basically, every time y'all see me fishing with a frog, pretty much it's a different color because I don't believe in colors at all. I mean, sometimes it might make a super slight difference, but for the most part, I think they all bite them pretty much the same. Now, I do keep colors, a lot of different colors, because if they're feeding on bluegill or feeding on shad or, or feeding on anything pretty much, or the water color, I will change, but it's pretty much to make me feel better. I feel like the fish eat a frog just because of the size and the action and the presentation. My goal with the frog is to get this thing as far back and everything I can get it in as possible. So, obviously, some of the fish I catch are pretty far back. Some of them are on the tips. You never know where the bites are going to come from, but... There's nothing more satisfying than skipping this thing way back under an overhang or an undercut or any a dock or anything and having the one blow up on it. So basically, only thing I do to alter a frog, you know, a few years ago, they made spro frog's legs come about this long. They used to come probably this long. I would trim them if I'm skipping them a lot. If I was in open water, I would leave them pretty long. Now, I just leave them exactly how they are. I do bend the hooks out just enough so that whenever I rub my fingers down the side of the frog, they will stick my fingers. That's all I do. I don't bend them up. I don't really bend them out. I just bend them just enough so that whenever it slides down the backs, I, they will prick my finger. Because when a frog comes out of the package, it's laid up really close to the body, and I feel like you could miss more fish or hook them, you know, more towards the lips if you leave it, you know, the way it comes out of the package. So I do bend it out to where it will prick your fingers a little. 65 pound braid. I like a eight strand or nine strand braid. Pretty much, I always want to use something that is smoother. I don't like a braid that's a four carrier, which everybody knows, like a Power Pro is a four carrier. It's really, really rough braid. I don't use that kind of stuff. I don't feel like it casts as well. 
I do think it cuts grass a little better whenever it's a four strand, but I do like to use eight strand braid, 60, 65 pounds, something like that. I use a Corrado 70 XG Shimano. That is my favorite reel for almost everything. It's 8.2 to one gear ratio. It is a very, very fast rod. It does not hold a ton of line. That's the problem if you're fishing grass mats and you're bomb casting. It's not gonna hold enough 60 to 65 pound braid to make super long casts. But for rolling around and skipping under overhangs and stuff, it's like the perfect reel in my opinion. So all you just wanna make sure you use as fast a reel as possible for everything you work with the rod and the frog, you cast it out and you work the frog with the rod. All you do with the reel is reel up slack. So for that, you always want to use as fast a reel as possible, just like if you're fishing a jig. You work the jig with the rod, you want to have the fastest reel possible because you're only picking up slack with it. Basically, the rod, I feel like this is, I've been fishing with this rod for a while now. I honestly do think this is the best frog rod I've ever picked up. It's a pride, seven foot six, extra heavy, moderate fast. What this does, this thing has a ton of backbone. It takes a lot of pressure to load this rod, but you can see in my videos, whenever I set the hook, this rod loads all the way down here to, all, to like the last guide. But it takes a ton of pressure to load it, but whenever it does load, it's like a giant swim bait rod. It's gonna keep that line tight. Even if you snatch a fish out of the water, it's gonna be easier to keep pressure on the fish because this rod loads more. If you have a rod that only bends in the tip, like a lot of frog rods only bend like this, Basically, you're going to have a very, very small window to make an error. So if you make an error, that line's going to go slack instantly, and it's going to make you lose the fish. Also, what it's going to do is if the backbone hits way up here in the rod, it's going to force you to rip a hole in the fish's mouth. And whenever you rip a hole in the fish's mouth, when that fish shakes his head, you, you're going to be able, it's going to be able to throw that frog a lot easier. So this rod is powerful, so I can move fish with it, but it bends all the way down to here, so it absorbs some of the shock from my hook sets, and it does not rip a hole in the fish's mouth it to me this is the best frog rod but if you like that video i appreciate you guys watching leave a like leave a comment hit the subscribe button me and hunters out here again today gonna try to make another video so i will see y'all in the next video all right last thing i'm gonna say about frog fishing if you want to buy frogs at a discounted price sportsman's outfitters has them for a decent amount cheaper than everywhere else i think the last time i ordered them they were a little bit over a dollar cheaper than Tackle Warehouse, which is pretty good. So check out Sportsman's Outfitters.